Hi, this is Ryan from BetterTatsMe.com. I'm gonna give you some tips today about stuff. Uh, let's talk about how cartridges, the needles, differ from tube and bar setups. Rock and roll. All right, now that's over with. Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> um, I haven't seen too many people cover this. I uh, actually haven't seen anyone cover this yet. So um, I think it's really important that we're trying to figure out how we are running our machines and how we're doing our approach. And like even I've made a mistake um, on this in the past, uh, giving advice that's very specific about how sp like certain uh, setups are utilized. Um, after, I don't know, in the past eight or nine months, I've been doing a lot of research um, into how these two setups differ. Um, and I don't care if you're using a rotary or a coil um, with either one of these setups, but how they actually can be utilized on the skin is different, right? And it's really important to know how they work so that you can hopefully adjust how you're running them and make it work better. And this is also kind of an easy way to, to notice that if somebody's giving you advice about how to set up or how to run things or how to do this or how to do that, which I was even giving bad advice for a while. And so if I have given bad advice, but I do apologize, but um, we're hoping to rectify that now by just, you know, we're coming clean or something. I don't know, you can use one of those stupid titles on YouTube. Anyways. Um, so when we start thinking about our, our, our traditional setups, the, the tube and bar setup is, is really simple, right? You have an encasing with a guide, a tube tip that is fit to the width of your needle, uh, and then there's rubber bands that are utilized to apply tension to the back of that tube by, by holding the needle against it, which is um, going to control your ink flow, right? So if, if the needle bar is coming down and the tube backing after you get from the well, as is such, and those bands are going to be pulling it against the back, and it's usually going to be set up pretty high, so you actually have a ton of force really pulling it back. What this does is it creates a space that if you're trying to move away from the tension of, of those rubber bands pulling against the back of that tube, you end up getting what we call a skip, where the needle ends up bouncing across because it's arcing over if you're moving against it. So. Uh, when you're using these traditional setups, you really have to be careful not to not to drag your needles. They have to move in one very specific way. And I had been telling people you got to do this with the uh, the rotaries and the cartridge type setups. So I was friggin' wrong. So let's get into why I was wrong. I thought it was pretty interesting. Also, uh, when I got into it, I mean, there's like strengths and, and weaknesses to each one of these setups, right? Um, and so knowing how those are going to affect your, your, your actual work when you're applying a tattoo is, is really key because this means you can start planning for different techniques or different required results to, to be made and you don't have to work as hard to do it, right? Like there's certain things you can do with a coil machine easier, faster, and you know cheaper than you can with a rotary and vice versa. So anyways, I'm doing this off the cuff and I just ate a bunch of peanuts so if I burp a couple times I apologize. Anyways, uh, to construction, we start getting away from the traditional, let's call this like trad set up and this is going to be our, our more current uh, cartridge setup right let's call it cart um, inside of the cartridge if you disassemble them you have an outer shell and then there's a needle on bar with a plunger type apparatus that is able to move up and down but only so far because there's a stopper on one side of it which is kind of fun right um, on there there is a bladder right and we, we won't do bands right now because It'll get really confusing, I think, if we have like bands and bands and, and, and no, no, no. The bands basically operate the same way as this. They just have a different wiggle on them, which is difficult to describe and I'm not going to get into right now. Anyways, um, there's a bladder that is going to be glued to the grouping and attached and or glued at the top by the rear part of that plunger stopper. And then the needles come out of it. And the idea is that the tension on this, because of the rotary machine, uh, and especially these pen types, what happens is you have a cam that spins around in a circle and drives a push bar that is going to, uh, it's going to be similar to like the, the A bar apparatus moving up and down, right? This is what causes a reciprocation with stuff. Sorry, I haven't made a video in like four months and this feels weird. Anyways, um, so
So to keep the pressure against this push bar so you don't just end up getting a whole bunch of slapping, these bladders are made to extend and pull back at a very specific rate based on what their actual materials are. And so far, I have pulled apart I know, like 20 different brands. I have not seen different tension abilities, or tensionable abilities of the uh, silicone bladders that are located inside the tube. So I think that they're relatively consistent. And I, I don't know why, because you'd figure with different strokes, it might be better to have, you know, like a, a much more elastic and slower moving uh, bladder for a machine that, that's gonna have a very long stroke, right? Cause it's gonna have to stretch further. And ones that are, you know, gonna have a very short stroke, like a 2.4, something like that, having it be really snappy and come back quicker would, would probably be of benefit as well. I don't know, I don't make these things, but um, if you are a person who does manufacture them, let me know. Uh, if you want to manufacture them with me and you have money, cause I don't, let me know. <laughs> By the way, support the show. Buy me a coffee. Uh, anyways, so yeah, so when these things are moving around, that bladder actually will end up like, it extends, right? So you'll like look at, let me get rid of some of this extra shit, sorry. You'll see the, the bladder on this as it attaches to the needles. There's like a little stopper that comes back here. Our push rod that sets on like where the needles come out like that. And our stopper on the back. It'll actually like stretch quite a bit. And if you're like me, I think it might just be a lot of fun to just go, if you have a cartridge at home, pull it apart. Just pull it apart. Just take, you take it, you grip. Back. So you go, you find your cartridge, you just grip it around there, take that back and just pull it out. See how it sets? And you can see how this push bar is able to go one way. It's got a stopper that's gonna stop it from going in the back where the needles are mounted onto it. But you can see how much that bladder actually stretches, right? The amount of stretch and the return rate that's gonna happen is going to increase, of course, the further that it gets away. But at the same time, these things can wear out really quickly. You gotta think if it's moving at 10,000 RPMs, you know, it's, it won't be. Uh, then, then this thing is gonna undergo some immense amount of stress, right? And so its ability to return over time is going to degrade, which means, I mean, compared to like the, the trad models, uh, with you get the tube and bar set up, the consistency of that throw and your, your ability to keep a consistent speed in which your, your stuff is gonna be firing, returning and reducing slap or even having any jiggle inside of it is gonna decrease, right? So the, the traditional setup of bar and tube tends to be really rigid, but you have to run it one way, right? These ones, the cool thing about them is as soon as you put it back in the tube is because there is constant pressure from all sides because of that rounded bladder that's on it. You don't have, if the tubes are made well, you won't have a lot of wag inside of it and you can move basically any way you want because there's constant pressure from all sides. So you can pull backwards, you can push forwards, you can go side to side, you can do whatever you want because that bladder is acting like a whole bunch of rubber bands all around it holding it in place, right? So this is why sometimes, and I, I've been guilty of saying this, you gotta push your lines and people are like, screw you, Ryan, like, you don't know, I can do it any which way. You're right, yes, you're totally right. There's a caveat to that. <laughs> so we'll both be wrong together. Um, when you have these going, if you are gonna be pushing, pulling, doing anything that you want with them, that's only gonna work and be most effective if the actual tube needle combo is perpendicular to the skin, right? If it is perpendicular to the skin, you know that the force that's being applied to this is gonna be even all the way, right? If you have that leaned over and you push, pull, do something else, you're gonna be increasing with the fulcrum effect how far or how much stress is gonna be applied to that bladder in different areas. What does that mean? It is gonna make it run worse the more that you have that sucker tipped over. So as we see a lot of people running their lines on YouTube very slow and totally up or really far back and pulling it backwards. It's not just about sight. It's actually because they're trying to make sure that their needle isn't gonna be bounced around in the fucking tube. Maybe I'll have that, that fuck. Um, anyways, so this is why, or how they differ, at least in their operations. I mean, it's far more complex if we want to get into the physics of it, but just know this. If you have a hard time not, de um, like, like running a line or doing a fill, and you, you want to see exactly where you're going, you're almost people who put their eyes right on that tattoo, which is gross, don't do that. It's back spraying your eyes. Um, but if you do, it's okay. Um, you're gonna probably want to use 
one of these because it's going to give you that freedom to move in the way that you want. Now, don't get comfortable with them though, because as far as my tests have shown, these are far less consistent with certain parts of the body. Because that return rate is not going to be consistent based on all of those different variables you can part on it. These usually don't work very well, as long with, well, where it's like rotaries, direct drives, anything like that, on places where the skin is really malleable. Right? If it can move a lot, if it's highly flexible, you get collarbones, the skin stretches a lot, you know, the armpits, the ditch, the elbow, you know, fingers, not the back of the hand in some spots, but around the edges of it, yeah, absolutely. These are not going to work as well. There's more to it than that. I mean, just past the construction, which is what we're going here, just, just the cartridges versus the tube and bar. But they tend to be less consistent, right? And normally I think it's because one, stretching dynamics are gonna be a different, but also the more elastic the skin is, it's gonna be feeding back and pushing back and changing the return rate of that, that actual cartridge. So you're gonna to have to adjust it. If you try to run it the same as you would on the forum, it's not gonna work. Anyways, that's the first one for today. I think we're gonna make 10 videos, rock and roll. So if you like this, like, subscribe, ask us questions in the comments, do that stuff, and support us, go to the website and do things like that. I don't know. Uh, past that, hope you have a great day. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.